Hey guys, this is Mafro, and today we're dealing with DOS attacks. Lots of people have been asking me to make this video, and so here we go. You're about to learn all about DOS and DDoS attacks, how attackers get your IP address, how to lock down Skype, how to hide your IP with a VPN proxy, how to change your IP, certain special preparations you can make for special events online, and lastly, how to track your attacker. So first off, what is a DOS attack? Well, DOS first off stands for denial of service, just so everybody knows. And I'm going to walk you through what a DOS attack is. So in the lower right-hand corner, there's your computer. Um, in modern households today, most computers connect first through a router. And oftentimes, there's other devices as well that connect to that router that then connects to a modem. That modem then uh, connects through an ISP to the internet out there. ISP grants you an IP address. In this example, I have a fake IP address, 127.0.0.1. And when you connect to the internet, you have a certain amount of bandwidth, sometimes called a pipe, that determines how many megabits per second you can upload or download to the internet through your ISP. And through this process, you then get to connect to a web server out there that can send back information like a web page or other information, uh, Skype, call data, all that sort of a thing. Now, a DOS attack is when one of those servers out there is hostile towards you, knows your IP address, and sends you lots and lots of data to the point where it actually clogs up that pipe to the internet. If it sends so many packets of data to you in a short period of time, then effectively your internet access is completely consumed by that and your internet slows to a crawl. It's also possible for there not to be just one server doing this, but many. And that's where we have the DDoS acronym, which stands for Distributed Denial of Service Attack. All right, so first off, how'd they get my IP? They have to have your IP address in order for them to commit a denial of service attack. So that's the starting point here. Um, your ISP knows your IP address, but they're not gonna be committing a denial of service attack against you. Um, if you go to a website, then that website has to know your IP address. It gets it automatically in order to send images and text and web pages back to you. So if you go to a website that someone else controls, it's possible that they could go onto the web servers, look through the web logs, and find your IP address that way. So be careful going to websites that you think might be controlled by someone who could potentially commit a denial of service attack against you. But really what we have to worry about is Skype. This right here is where 90%, probably more than that, of IP addresses get identified through a process called uh, Skype resolvers. And there's, they're out there on the internet right now. And what I'm gonna show you right now how to lock down your Skype account so that most Skype resolvers will not work. So I'm gonna pop over to Skype right now into my uh, Skype account. And here we can see that um, I'm gonna go into Tools, Options. And under Options, I'll go to Advanced and then to Connection. Now this is just for Windows Skype. I can't help you if you got a Mac, but you can probably figure it out. And what's really important is this little thing right down here. This defaults to being unchecked. You want to make sure this is checked. You want to only allow direct connections to your contacts only. And what this does is when you call someone who isn't a contact, Skype will keep your IP address hidden. Otherwise, it reveals it. So uh, this is how people are able to use Skype resolvers to find your IP address. If you have this checked, it becomes very, very hard for people to get your IP address through Skype. Still possible, but now it's only possible for your direct contacts to be able to do that. So if you have contacts out there that might be hostile towards you, they could still, in certain ways, perhaps find your IP address, but this greatly limits and allows you to control who has that IP address simply by removing people from your contacts that you don't trust. Get it? Got it? Good. All right, so now that we know how they got your IP address in the first place, let's talk about other ways that you can protect yourself, such as by using a VPN or a proxy. So first off, what's a VPN? Uh, a VPN or a proxy uh, is um, similar in some ways to an ISP, but they work in tandem with it. So here's this little uh, thing that we looked at earlier. Here's your computer connecting to a router. The router connects to a modem, and your, IP, your ISP is giving you an IP address. And uh, a proxy service is uh, like, kind of like an ISP, but it's a tough ISP. And what they do is they have servers out there that you can connect to and go through those servers to the Internet overall. So in this example right here, I've used a, a proxy service, and proxy services often have uh, dozens, hundreds, sometimes even thousands of proxies that you can go through. And in this case, I've gone through a, pro a proxy server called 64361249. Each of these might be in a different location. Perhaps this is in the uh, United States, maybe this is in the UK, maybe over here is Australia, uh, wherever you might be. And I'm connecting to the internet through this, and the internet, all those resources, web servers, and things out there on the internet, see my IP address as being 64.36.124.9. In other words, it's hiding my real IP address. 
if they already knew that IP address, they could connect to it directly. But right now, because I'm using a proxy, they're going to see this is my IP address. So let's say I've, I've got a, a server out there that's hostile towards me, and they know my IP, IP address is 64.36.124.9. Perhaps they just resolve that IP address using a Skype resolver because they're uh, in my Skype contacts, and they attempt to flood my internet connection with uh, packets, in other words, commit a denial of service attack against me, at this point, it's really easy to solve the problem. I simply disconnect from that proxy server, connect to a different proxy server, and I'm back onto the internet. Now all this denial of service attack is doing is causing a little bit of problem for this proxy service, but that's really what the proxy service is for. They've got uh, expertise, hardware, and other things that can um, deal with that denial of service attack themselves. So I'm able to serve free really, really easily in just a few seconds by changing the proxy server that I'm going through. I'll actually show you what this looks like by using my own proxy service that I use myself. It's a uh, service called Private Internet Access. I've got the logo here, PIA. And I spend $3.33 a month in order to have a, a good, fast VPN proxy service available to me. That's less than, you know, what is that? That's like half of a $6 burger, um, you know, a month that allows me to, to surf the internet privately and to be able to, uh, to uh, avoid denial of service attacks if I'm ever attacked. I'll show you what it looks like. So in my lower right-hand corner here, I've got a little thing here. I'm connected to my proxy, and I appear to be coming from California. It even shows the IP address, 23.246.221.1.109, that I'm showing to the rest of the world. However, it's really easy for me to disconnect from that and to connect to any of these other proxies, which each have their own IP addresses. So even if someone were to resolve my Skype IP address and get 23.246.221.109, that is the IP address I'm showing right now through my own proxy, it doesn't really matter because I can just take this and literally in 30 seconds I'll be connected through a different IP address. It won't affect me at all. And if they did attempt to uh, attack this, this, this proxy is shared by hundreds, maybe even thousands of different people. It's a really uh, solid server. And so it would be very difficult actually to even commit a denial of service attack against that IP address. So I'm pretty well protected from my, um, because of my, uh, my proxy here. And, uh, and so it's, it's a great service. I, I recommend it to others as well. Uh, private internet access, I'm not affiliated with them. It's just, uh, I'm just a customer. So um, let's talk about this. Once you've got a proxy in place, you want to change the original IP address that you were connecting from, just in case anybody already resolved it from before when you had the proxy and could uh, attack it directly. So here's how to change your IP ad address. Most residential ISPs use something called DHCP, which means they give their customers dynamic IP addresses, not static IP addresses. A dynamic IP address is an IP address that will change dynamically, periodically. It's leased to you for a certain period of time, and even if you do nothing, will probably change every once in a while, every few days, every few weeks, however uh, long their leases last. So to find your current IP address, simply go to Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever your favorite search engine is, and search on what is my IP, and it will return back to you your IP address. At that point, you can see if you can change it. Just try resetting your modem. That sometimes resets the least IP address. So to do that, just turn your modem off, your cable modem or whatever it might be, for five minutes. Leave it off. You can unplug it if you want. It doesn't really matter. And in five minutes, turn it back on. Go back to your search engine and type in what is my IP and see if you've got a new IP address, if it's different from the IP address that they gave you before. If it is, you're done. You now have a, a brand new IP address that no one knows, and it's hidden behind the proxy service that you've got. So it's safe. Um, if five minutes, turning it off for five minutes doesn't work, you may have to uh, turn it off for longer. You can try turning it off overnight or for 24 hours. And if that doesn't work, or if you have a static IP, then you can call up your internet service provider and tell them you need a new IP address. You're their customer. They'll probably give it to you without too much hassle. So let's talk now about special preparations you can make for special events. For example, I play Minecraft on a server, mnb.net, and every Friday there's a special event where there's a PvP event that takes place and all the players get into a big free-for-all, and it's during this event that we see players get hit off, is the word that people use, get DOS attacked. And so here's what I would do if I were them to uh, prepare for that event so that they don't have to worry about it anymore. First off, make sure you always use a VPN or proxy service. Now, um, do that during normal usage so that no one get your real IP. I, I should also point out there are free proxy services out there if you want but they're not known for being terribly fast. So if you use a, a free proxy service, it's more likely that your internet connection will be a little bit slower because you're going through um, a, a server that you're not helping to support with uh, donations or with uh, some sort of payment to keep it running. It's free, right? So um, and you get what you pay for. So here's what you want to do. Assuming that you've used a VPN or proxy service, turn off Skype. While Skype is off, your IP address cannot be resolved, even from people within your contacts. 
Alternatively, you can use a trusted Skype account if you just have to be on Skype with only your close friends that you know are not going to be committing attacks against you or not going to be uh, resolving your IP address and sharing it with others. It's also a good idea to stop browsing websites for the duration of this event just to make sure that you're not getting your IP address taken and used against you from a hostile website or a website with a, uh, a hostile owner. Lastly, disconnect your proxy. Why would you do that? Well, now you're going to be using your real IP address and no one can find it because Skype is off. So you now have a private IP address unknown to the world, and you have the best ping possible. That means that your internet connection is as fast as it can possibly be. You're not going through a proxy server, which sometimes can slow things down a little bit. So this is what you can do to prepare for special events. Um, it's also possible just to change your IP address through your ISP before that event, and then just make sure that Skype is off so that no one can resolve it after you uh, have done so. So let's talk about if you do come under attack, and you think you're under attack, what can you do? Well, first off, the attacking computer will have an IP address, and you can definitely find it. I'm going to show you how right now. I use a software uh, called TCP View. It's freeware. It's absolutely free for Windows. All you got to do is look up TCP View. You'll find it and uh, download it. It's actually just a, uh, an executable, a tcpview.exe file that you can run it. It doesn't have really a formal install process. Run it if you think you might be under attack. I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. And then sort the data that you're going to be receiving by received packets, the sending. I'll pop over to TCP view right now because I have it uh, up and running. So I've got this up and running, but I'm hiding part of the information here because it's got some of my private information. I don't really want to share that out on YouTube. But you can see that I've got uh, received packets right here, and each one of these rows represents a connection to my computer, a process. It could be an internal process, uh, or it could be an external process. So uh, here we are. We've got um, received packets, and uh, this is 139,000 received packets since I first opened up TCP View. Um, it's, that seems like a fair amount. It's much larger than the rest, but I can see that the remote address is uh, an asterisk, which means it's not truly a remote address. In fact, as I look down here, the first remote address I see is 111.221.74.20, but it's only sent me 929 received packets. If this was an attack right now, I'd see this number just increasing exponentially as packages were just flooded into my system. So right now I'm not under attack, and I can see that without any problem whatsoever. Um, if I want to understand more about some uh, servers that are connected to mine, I can simply right-click and choose who is and see if there's any information about the, uh, uh, the connection here. And I can see I'm connected to the Indiana University, and I even have information about how to contact an administrator if I felt that that IP address was uh, committing a denial of service attack against me. I could simply email them, could even call them, get in touch with an administrator, and uh, let them know that their uh, IP address pool is being used to attack me. They might do something about that. So I just went over, if you're under attack, the top row of rows will quickly have hundreds of thousands of received packets, far more than any other rows, and the attack, attacking IPs can be found under the remote address column, as we were just seeing here, remote address. So what do you do with your attacker's IP once you get it? Well, there's a few things you can do. We can right-click on it and see and use who is to see if it's a business IP. If so, it is most likely a network stress testing service. That's what they're officially called. These are businesses that are meant to stress test uh, another business's network. It's a way of, for a business to essentially commit a denial of service attack on themselves to see how well they withstand it. So if, uh, if it is a network stress testing business, you can contact them and inform that they are committing an unwanted and illegal denial of service attack against you. Uh, if they're a legitimate business, they will immediately stop the attack. They will then identify who it was that uh, requested that attack, and they will make sure they don't do business with that person in future. They may even pass that information on to the authorities that are local to that individual in order to uh, see if there's criminal or civil legal action that can be taken against them. So if who is reveals nothing, it is likely a personal IP address. This is kind of cool now. If you play a server-based game such as Minecraft, you can just send that IP address to the administrator of that server, they can then their, use their own tools to see if that IP address is associated with a player, like a player account, and then deal with it. For example, banning a Minecraft account from using their server if that IP address associated with that account has been committing denial of service attacks. Um, now, I should also mention denial of service attacks, as I alluded to earlier, are illegal in every country with a functioning legal system. You can contact the local authorities with the IP address, and they can pursue criminal or civil legal options. So thanks. That's pretty much it. So far, we've learned all about DOS and DDoS attacks. We learned how to lock down Skype, how to get a VPN or proxy, how to change your IP address, you know, special event preparations, and finally, how to track an attacker. If you like this video, if it was helpful, please let me know by clicking that like button. I always appreciate that. And please subscribe if you want more tips to give you the edge. Thanks, guys. Bye.